as Isabella said, I'm uh, partly an exhibition producer and I'm also the project manager of a regional project aiming at uh, increasing the use of digital technology within the cultural institutions in the region. Um, Uh, as uh, in society as a whole, uh, the cultural industries and the cultural institutions are under the under the influence of technology in different ways. And uh, Sweden becoming uh, one of the most uh, digital societies, uh, countries in the world, is a clear political aim. And that's why I'm working with this project uh, in this region. Um, the underlying idea nowadays is that cultural uh, practices uh, in different areas, they need digital technology to stay relevant, I think, in this digitalized world where everything seems to be in the digital world. Cultural needs digital technology to um, yeah, stay relevant and to continue to have its audience in place. One can argue, argue but is that really true? I'm not so sure. Um, uh, this uh, discussion is also going to lead up to the um, mm, definition of the concept of immersion, I think. So let's begin with this picture, which I can take no credit for when it comes to the exhibition that is showing. Uh, this is an image from an exhibition that I visited most recently, which is a world touring exhibition called Van Gogh Live, The Experience, and it's produced by an Australian company. But I visited this exhibition in Kalmar in Sweden. And the reason for showing this image is that maybe you recognize it. It's one of uh, Van Gogh's most famous paintings. And what they did in this exhibition was to sort of recreate this room from this uh, painting in real life. So this is actually real furniture standing there. So you could sort of walk into his painting, you know, experience it. Uh, it was there, I was in it. And uh, that experience to me was highly immersive. Um, it uh, was something almost, I don't know, uh, I don't really know how to explain it, but it was sort of unreal in a way, but also very, very real. It uh, started my imagination to run wild, you know, and I was started to think uh, and feel all kinds of things that um, maybe um, the, um, that painting made me think about. Um, so it was an immersive experience and working with immersive technologies and being exposed to uh, a lot of immersive technologies and also promoting the use of them, uh, I started once again to think of something that has puzzled me or annoyed me quite a few times over the past years. What is immersion really? And does it have anything to do at all with technology? Uh, maybe we should have our first look at one definition of immersion. So, uh, immersion is a perception of being physically present in a non-physical world. That is sort of the standard defini definition when you look, it from a, look at it from a technological perspective. So it has nothing to do with the real world, really. And all of a sudden, I started to think again about that um, experience I had at the, at the Van Gogh exhibition. And Looking at this definition of uh, immersion, all of a sudden, my immersive experience at this exhibition was no longer immersive at all. And can it be so? But it's not that strange, though, because uh, when I get exposed to all these <laughs> immersive technologies on a daily basis, yeah, it could be some of these, for example. Uh, all of these are examples of immersive uh, technologies that me, myself, promote on a daily basis. As the story goes today, they are particularly good for telling stories and for um, 
transforming messages into a wider audience. So we have the Dome Theater, for example, very popular nowadays. That is an immersive medium. It's an immersive technology. And we also have virtual reality. You've all seen these VR glasses by now. And uh, we have projection projections as well as a new form of immersive technology. And as you see there, there are also Van Gogh uh, paintings there. Uh, and that image is from the same exhibitions. Um, but I guess what I'm struggling with, that <laughs> when I'm supposed to promote all of these uh, immersive technologies, uh, I never really get told why they are so extremely good, one can say. Uh, most of the arguments that I get and I, that I tell myself are what can be described as technological uh, properties, basically. So uh, the reason for me to, for example, choosing to tell a story in a dome theater uh, it is often argued is because there are 8K projectors, they are laser projectors, and uh, there are loads of them, for example. Or when it comes to the VR glasses, it's always about the definition of how the well resoluted it is, or what platform it's built up on, because that platform has very many advantages compared to the other ones, or so or so. So it's always about technology, technology, technology technology. But is that really what makes something immersive? And is that why we should use it? Because we have 8K projectors. I'm not so sure. Um, when I was a kid, I was one of those kids who loved reading books. I could do it for hours and hours and hours. And one thing that I really loved about it, that that good told story, a book, had the possibility to transport me into another world. A well told story really could get me into that place that someone wanted to take me to. I mean, isn't that immersive? If anything, I would say. Uh, let's look at another definition of uh, immersive that I grabbed from the Cambridge Dictionary. And when we look at this one, it's rather different from the previous one. Uh, here, they choose to talk about seeming to surround the audience, the player, because immersion can occur when playing a game, of course. Uh, so that they feel completely involved in something. And they also give an example, and that example in this case is a theatrical experience. So they clearly say that a theatrical experience can also be immersive. So is there anything different between these two defini uh, definitions, and do they need to contradict each other. Uh, no, they don't, but they need to marry, I must say, because having worked within this field, within technological uh, development and museums and uh, within the fields of cultural history and science and technology communication, uh, I, feel I felt frustrated from time to time and still do, because it seems like, you know, these two perspectives have a difficult time marrying. And I think they should, they definitely should. Uh, because the body of knowledge on how to tell stories in a good way have developed in within different fields, such as film, books, and uh, theater performances through centuries. It really has. But it seems like in this wave of uh, new technology, we sometimes seem to forget all of the knowledge on how to tell good stories. And it sort of gets lost within all these uh, technical specimens. Uh, and. Uh, Therefore, I haven't seen that many good productions <laughs> within these uh, immersive technologies just yet. Because it seems like these two competences, the competences on how to tell stories and how to develop uh, technology, 
they don't play together as much as they should. Um, uh, why, and why should they? Yeah, because uh, when um <coughs> the technicians, for example, I mean, they know so many good things about the technology they develop. And I'm uh, not one of those who doesn't love technological development, I really do. And I feel that, um, I mean, technology has given us so many tools, but it feels like today we're still uh, in a state where things happen <laughs> in like two different areas of the world. You know, we have the cultural institutions and we have the technological institutions and we don't get the best out of all this technology if we don't learn how to work together and to listen to each other's competences and how to really be innovative uh, when exploring how these new technologies can be, be used in purposeful ways. Um, so I guess that what I'm trying to say here today is that to really get the most out of all these new immersive technologies in uh, the field of uh, cultural institutions where I'm working, we really need to marry these two perspectives on immersion. We need to look at immersion, immersion as something technology can contribute to, but we also always have to take into consideration that technology is nothing without the stories we choose to tell. So we always have to bear that in mind. So. That's what I had to say.